What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel for a brand new Sorare video. If you are brand new to Sorare or haven't started yet, this video is for you. I'll be covering a load of topics including how does Sorare work, the different game modes, the free to play game mode as well, the different types of cards, how the market works and much much more and if you haven't signed up to Sorare just yet please consider using my affiliate link in the description of this video below when you buy five cards from the auction or instant buy you receive 50 pound to spend on Sorare let's jump straight into the video and the first thing what i would say is try to use a laptop or desktop where possible for a better experience the app and using your mobile phone is okay but I much prefer using a desktop or laptop. And as you can see on screen, there are two game modes when it comes to Sorare. First being Sorare Rivals, which is completely free to play for anyone. And there's also the pro mode as well. We need to buy cards from Sorare or other managers to set your lineups over on pro. So let's start with jumping in to Rivals. There is some differences, but they're also... And some crossovers as well, i.e. the crossover is a scoring matrix, which I'll come on to in just a moment in time. So I've joined a match here. So just jumping into my lineup for this game for Spain versus France in the Euro semi-final. As you can see, you pick five plays, and that applies to the pro version as well. Now, you do have a points cap on rivals, not on pro, and it's just for one game on rivals where on pro you can build two liverpool players two man city players and an arsenal player as an example for this rivals match you've got spain versus france and you can only pick five players from the two teams any player from any team there's no sort of stacking rules um, or limitations on this one only just a points cap on here so you can see i've picked five players on here some cards are red for me Again, I'll explain the scarcities in a moment in time. So, a points cap, you might be asking Jack, why are players under different points under here? That's their last 15 score on so rare. So, just for example, if we go into Mbappe, just above my face here, these are his last scores on so rare. So, scores are out of 100. I'll put on screen now um, a bit of a scoring matrix. I'll leave a link to this in the description of this video below as well. But just for example, if we go into his last game against Portugal, you can see his decisive score, his all-round score, and some other scoring matrix as well. So just as a rule of form, again, I'll leave a link in the description below of this video, all about the scoring matrix. But if a player starts, they get 35 decisive score. If they get sent off, um, or a goalkeeper concedes three goals, as an example, that drops down to 15. Um, but for Mbappe here, it's a Saturday score is 35. If he scores this game, that jumps up straight away to 60. If he gets another goal, it jumps up to 70 and 10 points every so often. Um, All-round score is added on to decisive score. So decisive score goes up like that. So 35, 60, then 70. All-round score can go up in 0.1 or minus 0.1 as an example. So all-round score consists of things like yellow cards, fouls, um, tackles, possession one. Again, I'll leave a link to all this in the description below. Shots on target as well. A lot and lots goes into the all-round score on so rare. So once you've picked your five players on rivals, you click continue. So you select a captain, much like you would do over on the pro version as well. But on rivals, you select a tactic. There's five different tactics. I won't go through them all, um, but you can see they explain what they are. So Tiki Taka is passing. And as you can see, if you get over 130 passes from these five players, you get an extra 10 points on top of your overall score. Um, same for contest one, shots on targets, etc., etc. as well. But for this example, let's go Tiki Taka. I expect a lot of passes from this team in the match, as an example. And you can buy cards on here, so Sorel will push cards to you. I'm going to continue without upgrades. And that's me done, entered um, for that France versus Spain game. So to get involved in the arena, click the play now. It will cost you one arena ticket. As you can see, I have 115 here. You do get one ticket per day. I've been playing Sorel for quite a while, hence why I do 
have a lot of tickets. Now, on the right-hand side, first of all, you'll go into Division 10 if you are brand new to Sorare. As you can see, I'm in Division 7 currently. Now, in my division, the top seven get promoted to Division 6, and the bottom three get relegated to Division 8, and the rest kind of remain in the same division. Now, there is prices up for grabs in rival so again this is completely free to play i will explain these cards and essence in a moment in time but for just for example mystery jersey and um, which is pretty much self-explanatory 0.1 chance of getting a physical mystery jersey delivered to your door and there's also the arena tickets as well which obviously as i mentioned a moment ago that cost um ticket to play these matches in rivals so that's Division 7 prize pool. And as you can see, if you do count the divisions to Division 1, um, the high percentage chances of getting a start limited card. And again, I'll go through this a bit more detail later on in the video. But just as an example, a start limited card could be an Mbappe, a Ballingham. The more the better chance of winning better card rewards on so rare. Also on Rivals, there's something called Missions and arena win streak so basically if you win three games in a row you win yourself a rivals reward box and as you can see again there's plenty of rewards up for grabs there and also in the daily missions there's also boxes in here as well that gets you arena tickets or card essence capsules which i'll go through in a moment in time and these kind of expire every day and um, for example this one Win a reader match by more than 80 points difference to win yourself a basic box. Now, before we jump into the pro version on So Rare, I think it's best to show you guys what each card means on So Rare. So, starting by jumping across to markets and auctions for this example, there's four different types of So Rare cards limited, rare, super rare, and unique. And as you can see, limited. Are the yellow slash gold cards which are the cheapest cards on so rare this is because they have a thousand mints of that player per season so as you can see nathan collins here 536 out of a thousand so so rare won't mint them all maybe throughout a season as you can see towards the end here the halfway through and uh, the mints and uh, for nathan collins and um, for the rares it's 100 so these are the red ones so become a little bit more expensive super rares is 10 and they're the blue ones again more expensive than the rares and if you haven't guessed already unique is one out of one so one card one unique card per player per season what i would recommend if you are starting to rare today and want put a few quid in is to start in the limited category by five players Get used to the matrix, get used to the game. As you can see under the player as well, there's a plus 5% bonus on each card you buy from auction or instant buy. So every card that Sarah sells is classed as an in-season card. So there's two types of card, which is the classic and in-season. Now, Premier League has just come to an end. So this Nathan Collins card at Brentford in the Premier League be classed as a classic season card in literally a few days or weeks time so keep that in mind this five percent bonus from 23 24 season will disappear that'll be coming on to zero and um, very very shortly and then sarah will stop minting their 24 25 season card starting off with number one out of a thousand over the next few weeks as we saw in the announcement a few days ago so keep that in mind as well there's two kind of card types the in-season card and the classic card. Let's jump into the pro game mode. Just a heads up, there's no Premier League or European competitions at time of recording this video. Just a few MLS games, the Copa America and of course the Euros as well. So as you can see, pro is a lot different compared to rivals and it can look quite daunting at first, but trust me guys, it is easy to get used to. At the top here, Got the different game weeks at the moment in time. We are July 9th to the 12th. A big difference between rivals and pro is that rivals you can change your team for that one game right until kickoff and have one sub as well. Where on pro 
you have a game week deadline. So usually in the UK, it's Tuesday at 3 p.m. I think it is, and then Friday at 3 p.m. for the weekend. And as soon as that hits, you can't change your team or make any subs. So if you find out at 5 past 3 on a Friday afternoon that Ant Harry Kane, for example, has got injured or pulled out of training, you're screwed. You're down to four players for the weekend. Pro game mode on so rare has a lot of different competitions, especially from August with things like Bundesliga, Premier League, La Liga, Champion, Under-23, Challenger, and Contender. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, Jack, what on earth is Champion, Challenger, and Contender? I mean... I was going to say you can see it on this screen, but you probably can't see the divisions on this screen too well. I'll leave a link to the blog in the description of this video. But as an example, um, Champions are the top five leagues in Europe. Challengers consist of like the MLS, the Brazilian League, the Portuguese League, the Championship in England, and contenders. We have things like the Argentina League, the Mexican League, and the Scottish League. Also on this graphic, you'll notice the classic and in season under every competition apart from under 23. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, the classic cards are the older season cards and the in season is that season of that card. So as a rule of form, the in season will be a lot more expensive than the classic. The reason behind that is a bit of a card cycle loop. So classic cards can help you win in season cards and in season cards win you cash so as i mentioned the in-season cards are a lot more expensive than classic cards if you have a low budget you're buying classic cards to start off with to win in season cards so either buy so either to sell sorry or play to win cash and as you can see in limited and also in rare you can have four in-season cards and one, one classic card to play in the in-season competitions and we also have multi-entry and divisions as well for each region. So as an example, for the Premier League, you could have three teams in Classic. So three lineups in Classic and three lineups in Season if you have the right cards to use. And this is an example of my lineups from back in May. Playing one in-season Premier League. So four in-season cards, a 3D cards here. And then Trent as a Classic card winning $60 that game week. And there's also a classic team as well using four classic cards and then Jal Pedro as an in-season card here. So classic to win your in-season rewards and in-season to win your cash. And just to give you a flavor of how to build lineups, the rewards and division structure for the pro game mode, use a next game week as an example in Challenger. We'll click on add team and we'll use classic season. You can see here, all our teams are in division two. Let's go for team B, and just for easiness of this video, let's go for the top five players in each position. You'll notice here, you pick a captain as well, which gives you an extra 50% score. And on the right hand side as well, we have two days, 19 hours, 24 minutes to submit this lineup. So we'll click confirm, we'll jump back into the team, or we'll view leaderboard, and this is where you see the rewards for that division. Future Jack here. At time of editing the video, Serena have just released their prize pool for the upcoming 24-25 season. $15 million being given out in the pro competitions on Serena. I will leave a link in the description below um, on this video to this blog and all the details. Just kind of give you a bit of an example for the classic seasons. And the top 25% of managers in each division will receive a raw box, which we'll go through later on in the original video. And as you can see, this is a bit of an example of the limited classic Premier League prizes up for grabs uh, for the upcoming season. And for in-season as well, kind of a big difference here between this right now and the original video um, is that they're actually giving out reward boxes in-season. So not only just cash as you might see in the original video, but they're also giving out reward boxes. In fact, the top 50% in each division in the in-season competition will also get a reward box as well, which include Essence, which we'll come on to in the original video, um, and also uh, market credits at the same time as well. And again, a bit of an example here, the limited in-season Premier League competitions 
all these different cash prices are up for grabs but let's go back to the original video so in my division division two first place wins are tier one and three boxes all the way down to 60 second that win a tier five and three boxes and the idea is division one will have better rewards division four will have still decent rewards but not as good as the higher division so the idea and the goal of this is to win promotion to division one to win those better rewards so hopefully that sounds good and you want to start buying cards and i will cover the prize pool at essence in just a moment in time guys so as you can see we're onto the market there is three ways to buy cards but also a few factors to consider as well i.e the in-season card the classic season card and also the collection bonus as well we'll touch on in just a moment in time the first way of buying a card is an auction there's also instant buy and manager sales massive shout out here to sir rare data make sure you're using sir rare data when you're buying cards you can see the price history of every card before you buy them to make sure you are buying that card at the right price so always use sir rare data it's a must have when you are playing Sarah. Trust me, guys, I've been playing Sarah for nearly four years now. And probably every day I have used Sarah data, if not more than Sarah, the site itself. So make sure yourself and use Sarah data um, as well. So starting with auctions, absolutely fine to buy from auctions, in my opinion. As you can see, the cart sells enough every single minute. You can buy these cards, these are all in season cards. And these are so rare themselves auction these cards out there's no managers involved here it's just so rare selling these cards there's instant buy now i would avoid buying from instant buy at all cost i think i've done it once or twice for collections and um, but instant buy are all sold by so rare and they're just very expensive i know so rare won't let me say that um but try to avoid using instant buy where possible as an example messy rare here £384 for this car from buy now on so rare and an auction went for 279 which is yesterday again using so rare data here yeah avoid using insta buy where possible and there's also manager sales as well so on here there's in season if you untip that you have classic season cards as well so let's just jump down to let's say we want to premier league um or let's say mls card for example want an old season card we're not too forced as you can see on here there's a lot of different cards knocking about so if you click into a messy limited card for example there's one two three four five cards cheaper being 58 pound compared to you know, auctions again these are classic season cards and you can't use this card in season or just one pearl lamp as i mentioned a moment ago um, but that is class as a classic season card on so rare another factor to consider is collections on so rare if you head to my club scroll down you'll see collections and just for example i'll use my man city collection right here so there's different percentages for different schools so as an example i brought a scott carson card as an auction so i'm the first owner of this card so if you win a card as a reward an auction or instant buy that gets you 20 points straight away. If you held the card for 90 days without listing it, that's an extra 10 points. And obviously, if you own the card, it's an extra 10 points as well. There's extra points as well for if it's a rookie card, a special edition, the serial number, or a number one card as well. As you can see, it's Man City Collection. I have a few cards, a score of 190. Now, what that means is you get 2% on all these cards in the Man City Collection. So if we click on to Rodri, for example, I've got the in-season bonus, which will disappear probably next week at 5%. I've got the collection bonus at plus 2, which I just saw there a moment ago. So plus 2 for all these cards. And I've also got, as well, the level 9 bonus. So every time you use a card, you level it up. So this goes up to 20, and that will go up, basically, to plus 10 as well. So the max you have a card, really, is 10 plus the five on collection bonus and the five um, in season bonus as well. It'd be quite difficult actually to get 10% in the same season as an in season card. Right? It's going to take about two years roughly to get that to plus 10. But that's how XP works. That's how collections work. You've got to try and figure out if it's worth buying from auction, buying a lot of players from one team. 
Um, I did a video, I'll leave a link to that right above my head right now. Our collection, one point literally, um, won me a division on so rare. So use it to your advantage. If you are buying from a secondary uh, market or manager sales, you'll only get um, a 10 points. So for example, I brought a timber here from a manager. I'll get 10 points because I own the card and another 10 points um, in literally 13 days on this card. So again, that's a pro from buying from an auction. You get more collection bonuses at the same time, but they can be more expensive. So use that you know, to your advantage. I will say 2%. As a rule of thumb, is, is great to get. To, it can be, can be quite easy. You know, two auctions and a manager sale gets you to, to 100 score after 90 days from each card. 3% is not too bad as well. I think you know, up here, 4% is quite difficult. You want at least 1% on each player, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's how kind of collection points work and XP works on so rare. I do apologize if I'm going through things a little too quick. If you have any questions about Sir uh, leave them below in the comment section below or drop me a DM on Twitter. Moving on to the best part of Sir uh, and that's the rewards. As I mentioned during the video, you can win rewards in Rivals and also Pro. For this example, we'll be using Pro. Now, the competitions you play will determine which card rewards you win on Sir uh. As an example, if you play in the Euro competitions and you win a card reward, the card reward you win will be a Euros player. As an example, if you win a card, let's say, in under 23, guess what? The player you'll win will be under 23 as well. Now, for this example, we'll use the Euros and the different tiers. So the different tiers, you've got the star, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5. And, of course, the star tier, if you jump in the prize pool, of the best players and most expensive players on the on the game. So star, you have Mbappe, Ballingham, Rodri, Kane, Matt Mignon, and Wirtz. These are all from the Euro competitions. As you can see, the different ones on left hand side. Tier one, tier two, Trent and tier two, great card. But they usually get lower value the lower tiers you go down. So the idea is hopefully to win a star rare. There's also boxes as well. So as you can see in the rare premium box. There's a star rare, not a great chance of winning that. A tier two, tier three. There's also credits as well, mystery jersey. Um, there's level ups as well, which we'll kind of touch on in a moment in time. But there's also something called essence as well, essence capsules. Collecting essence can help you craft cards on so rare. If you come to my club into so rare factory and click on your little capsules on here, you'll notice I have 11 capsules for limited and 55 for rare. So the little chart here on the top right, which you guys just about can't see, is a different threshold when it comes to crafting. So at the moment in time, I've got 55. I can craft for a tier 4 plus, which basically means I've got a 50% chance of winning a tier 4, 33 tier 3, etc, etc. And a star rare 1.5. So the higher you go, so if you get 500 and save up your, your essence, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting a tier 1. Or a star rare. So as I mentioned a moment ago, like an Mbappe or a tier one card. Or take the risk at a tier five and um, win a card with about a couple of quid. Or a chance at winning a Ballingham and Mbappe as an example. So it's really good addition to the game. This is very, very new to Sorelic in the last couple of months. You can win limited essence during rivals in the boxes, winning arena matches and divisions. And the rare, super rare, unique, and limited, of course, as well, you can win in pro. So this is quite key. Build your essence, craft a card. And again, if you head over on Twitter and type in so rare essence, you'll see some crazy results from people at tier five. We're like Kevin De Bruyne, for example. Amazing pulls. But that's how so rare essence works on the game. You can also win level ups in the boxes over on pro as well. And what that means, when you come to a player in your gallery, you can click the boost and use a level up to get my Anthony Gordon, for example, here from a level five to a level six. I have done a video on my channel on one of the best time to use level up is, but usually not right tier, when it's towards the bottom at a higher level as well. There we go, guys, an overview of so rare and how to play the game. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a DM on Twitter or leave them below in the comment section on this video. I've probably missed some things out. Again, any feedback, 
leave below in this video. And also, don't forget to check out my other videos on the channel. Some great guidance, some hints and tips, how to use bots, how to start to wear on certain budgets as well. But if you have enjoyed the video, smash that like button and I'll catch you on the next one.